Hey guys, it's 139. Um, got a video game review. Um, this is going to be a pretty quick one. Um, it's a review for the original Super, Mario's game, Super Mario game for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Um, I have the cartridge right here, but I'm not going to front with you. I beat it on the Wii U uh, with the um, save states and all that. Because I'll tell you, I don't know how the fuck anybody beat this shit with three lives. I don't know how the hell you went through 32 levels. Oh, uh, how? Dude, if you did that, I will shake your fucking hand and buy you a drink. I don't know how in the hell you did that. It probably took me about 100 not even lying. I tried to play it um, on the, my actual NES, um, and I like you know I was trying to figure out if there was like maybe you know limited lives glitch or something. Or uh, I know there there's in the second in World One Level Two. I know there's a port or a portal warp. It's like called a warp room or something where you can get into each different um, world, but that's still, you needed to go through two levels just to get to the world, and then if you were, like, say you died on uh, the fourth level, the Bowser level, in world, like, five, you'd have to redo the whole world, so that would just take forever, um, and, you know, as much as I wanted to play, a, like, a classic game and experience a classic game, I didn't want to spend 400 hours of my life trying to beat this game, um, so I just decided, you know, fuck it, uh, I'm just gonna download it off of the, um, you know, the Nintendo, what, whatever it's called, Nintendo Store, I forget what it's called, uh, but I got it on the Wii U for five bucks, um, with save states, and, you know, it played, it played really well on the Wii U, I have no, no problems with it, um, and I, I it's good to get some work in for my, with my Wii U, because I really never, like, I know it's like a, a kind of, you know, dubbed a failed console, um, and actually, believe it or not, today's Christmas, and I just got the Nintendo Switch, so I'll tell you right off the bat that this thing doesn't even stand a chance compared to the Switch. This thing has about, like, you can be 20 foot away from the actual console, um, and then it'll lose connection. So the novelty of having, like, the whole secondary screen thing is only really good unless, uh, if you bring the fucking console brick along and plug it in the wall... <laughs> And stay 20 feet close to it, or if you're just what like if someone's watching TV and you want to play the game, you can do that. Like you can play it while the TV's on cable or whatever. So you know, I guess it was a cool idea, but then they didn't release many other games with it. Uh, at least in my opinion, ones that I was interested in, uh, in at the time. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is it's good to get some work in with this uh, console because I paid $300 for it and I want to get some stuff out of it. You know, I paid $300 like probably five years ago for it and I've only really played I played a lot of Smash Bros honestly it's probably been worth it for that um, but nothing you know I played like Mario Kart and a couple other games in between but nothing really uh, worth the total $300 un unless you want to just say all the Smash Bros I played was worth it but anyway so I played it on the Wii U um, the original Mario game it's actually coupled with Duck Hunt on the cartridge. Uh, Duck Hunt's a pretty fun game, actually. And surprisingly accurate um, for uh, for the NES. Um, the Zapper is pretty good. Um, so, Super Mario, um, it consists of eight worlds. Each world has four levels. Um, the fourth being a, a Bowser's Castle level. Um, and it starts out pretty easy, um, at least level-wise. Uh, and then it gets progressively harder and harder, and uh, World 8, I was feeling the pain, I'll tell you that. Uh, World 8 was really tough. Even some levels in, like, World 2 and 3 were tough. Um, but, you know, I say the levels, and, and by that I mean just, like, the actual level being tough. Um, that doesn't even factor in that you have three lives the entire game, and if you lose your three lives, you have to restart the entire fucking game. You don't restart at, like, the beginning of the world or the beginning of the level. You restart the entire fucking game. <laughs> so, like, you know, call me whatever, you know, call me a, oh, you're a new gamer, you, you're weak compared to the old shit. Yeah, okay, you got it, pal. Like, if you say so, I just, personally, maybe if I was around in 1980, whatever, I think this game out came out in 85, 
if that's what we had in 85, I'm sure I'd be doing the same shit you were doing. But, buddy, I got, like, 300 other games I want to play. And, I, you know, I can't be spending 400 hours of my life trying to beat Super Mario Bros. <laughs> so I decided I was just going to kind of do a soft playthrough with save states. You know, nothing hardcore or anything like that. And at times the game still kicked my ass. Probably took me around, I'd say, only two hours to beat or so. Um, you know, of course, it's a small it's a small game, um, 32 levels, but each level really only takes you about five minutes max. Um, some of the harder levels at the end could take you like 10 um, with save states. But, you know, it was fairly, um, fairly enjoyable to go through. Um, you know, as a as a um, video game, a gamer striving to, um, you know, appreciate these old games. I say striving because this game came out 10 years before I was born, um, you know, and kind of look at them for what they are. Uh, I don't want to judge a game because, oh, it's old as shit, so the mechanics are fucked up compared to today. Like, no, I understand, you know, this, this is what there was back then. Uh, but in the same sense, it's kind of tough to judge a game like that because, you know, now there are so many better things. There's so many better, uh, you know, uh, obviously graphically, but that's stupid to even say. But, you know, mechanics-wise, smoother controls, better controllers, you know, all kinds of uh, stuff um, that if I were to compare this to even, like, Super Mario, uh, whatever the, the Switch version is, the newest one, I think it's just a port from the Wii U, but... Um, I think, you know, even that is, you know, I say better, but you have to put it in perspective. Um, so, but still an enjoyable game. Um, you know, the the platforming is, is fairly smooth. There are some issues with this, like, he was slide that, it, it got on my nerves a little bit, where uh, at the end of the game, they want you to land on these single blocks, and when you jump, Mario slides, his momentum carries with him. So it's really tough to be extremely precise with these jumps because when you land and you think you got it, Mario keeps moving and falls right off the side. So it's very, you know, like this, what I'm, you know, I got frustrated with save states. I could not imagine uh, playing this with three lives or four or five lives if you're able to get enough coins. I couldn't imagine. Um, you know, I would probably still be on the first fucking level because I had died 300 times and had to restart over and over again. Um, but, you know, other than that, you know, it introduced a lot of, a lot of characters in it. This is the first Mario game, so of course it's, uh, well, Mario is actually introduced in a Donkey Kong arcade game. Uh, but anyway, this is like for Mario's first standalone game. Um, Luigi's in it, if you play with two players, it's Luigi. Um, Princess Peach is the one you save, of course. Toad's in there. Um, Hammer Bro, uh, the Goombas, the uh, Koopa Troopas. Um, the Flying Koopas, there's, uh, what else, Lakitu, who's a pain in the ass, um, the fish things, I forget what they're called, are in it, um, yeah, I think that, that's really every, every character, oh, the Piranha Plants, they're introduced, I think that's really everything in there, um, you know, usually the, th the threat isn't actually the enemies, it's, um, trying to avoid them while being on an annoying terrain, so obviously it's not a fighting game, you can land on their head, um, and also if you get the fire upgrade, which is very useful, because you can actually kill, oh, Bowser, how did I forget Bowser, he's introduced, um, but you can actually kill Bowser with the, f with, I think it's like five or six fireballs, he just dies, and that's very useful in the end of the game if you can actually unlock, uh, not unlock, but earn the, um, find it in a block, um, because you don't have to kind of play chance with Bowser at the at, towards the end of the game. I think it's the last three worlds, and I didn't know he could do this. Um, he's able to like throw. I think they're hammers, not hammers. Maybe like uh, knives or something, axes. Maybe he just like throws them, kind of like Hammer Bro, but way faster. And you kind of have to like take a guess on whether or not he's going to throw them because there's no. In, at least when I picked it up. There wasn't really an indicator of when he was going to throw it. It kind of just seemed random. So, uh, you know, if you're tiny, you can actually sometimes run under him. Um, and if you're big, you have to run. Honestly, being big and not having a fire is probably worse than... Um, well, no, it's not, because you can take a hit and still live. But, yeah, if you have if you have the big, actually, you can just suicide in a Bowser and then run past him. But, um, 
you know, at the end of every uh, fourth level of every world is a Bowser, a Bowser level, um, and you know you go through the castle and it has like these spinning fire things, um, lava, and uh, and then you eventually towards the end you fight Bowser. It also has these like uh, puzzles that you have not really puzzles, but you have to pick the correct way to go, and if you don't, it'll just put you back in front in like the early part of the level. And that can get annoying because the the time there's a timer on the game, uh, and the further along you get, the less time you have. So that can kind of be stressful where you feel like oh, like I remember and I think it was like World Seven Four, I felt like I had done uh, every possible thing and I still wasn't getting it. Um, so you know, but once you get to Bowser, um, he he first shoots fire at you and he can actually shoot fire at you from a distance. You don't even have to be really in the boss battle yet. And you can still shoot fire at you through the map. Um, and then once you get close to him in the later levels, he can throw these uh, these axes. So he's throwing axes, he's shooting fire at you, and he's jumping up and down with a barrier moving around up ahead of you. So it's like a lot of shit going on. And that and that can, you know, that's kind of like what adds to the difficulty for the game. I mean, there's levels where you're running. Uh, there's a, I think there's like two or three, two, I believe two big levels, and then part of one of the Bowser Castle ones is where you're running, and there's just fish, like, jumping under you, but they, like, jump high, and then they land. So it's like, it almost reminded me of Angry Birds, like, where you flick the thing, and then it's like, so... They're coming under you. So if it hits you from bo the bottom, you're fine because it's like you're jumping on them. But if it hits you from the side or if it lands on top of you, you die. Um, so that those levels were kind of like, that was a little more of chance too. Um, and then there's, oh my god, the hammer bros are a pain in the ass because they just keep throwing their hammers and you don't know when they're going to stop. So you think they stop and then they just ding, 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 and they <laughs> kill you. Um, and, you know, keep in mind, like I said, 32 levels three lives and if you die you restart or if you lose lives you restart the entire game so honestly i gotta knock points off for that shit because that's ridiculous you could easily do like a password thing do a password thing or uh do just like i understand some games for the nes didn't have save files i get it that's fine it, you know if it, the tech isn't available i that's fine i'm not gonna be pissed and I'm not going to tell you to do that. It's, this obviously wasn't intended to do that great if it came with a, another game. Um, I think it came... I think it was a boxed game with an NES. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but, you know, how do you not at least do a password system? Like, three lives and you restart the whole game? That's ridiculous. I don't care what generation of gaming that is. That's just ridiculous. If you want to put a hardcore mode, fine. But, like, come on. Three lives for 32 levels, and this game is not easy either. Like, that's just... If you beat that shit, I give you props. <laughs> but uh, for the most part, um, you know, the platforming was pretty good. It, it was better than... It, it was better than bad. There's what I'm trying to say. Like, it's a more positive than a negative. Um, the Wii U was pretty responsive, believe it or not. And it got... It, at first, it was a little clunky. It felt kind of weird playing a, a Mario game on it, but I got used to it. I got used to it pretty quick, and the buttons were fairly responsive. At time, like I felt like one, a few times coming out of the save states, I felt like I was pressing a B, and I jumped, and it didn't give me the boost for running. But I think that was just because um, Mario was already in motion when I exited out of the save state, so maybe it didn't register the B or something like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, other than that, the Wii U, I thought it was pretty good. Um, emulating an NES game, I don't know how much credit you want to give it, but... <laughs> Um, yeah, but it was, you know, it's the start of, of, uh, the most popular, uh, video game character of all time, um, you know, so you gotta give it props for that. It's a little rough around the edges at times, um, but if you wanna play it and, and you're, like, a junkie like I am where you wanna start at the beginning, um, you know, buy a cartridge, buy a cartridge, try it out, you know, if you, if you don't, if you're not into, you know, playing for 400 hours to beat one game that came out 30 years ago then, then get it for one of the you know one of the uh i think you can get it on the switch i'm sure you can I'm, i don't know you can get it on the wii u i don't know about the ds maybe or the 3ds i don't know if you can i'm not sure if it would support that probably would honestly i don't know why it wouldn't be able to run this game um but yeah it's much better with save states and it's a fun little game you know probably take you 
if you if you're committed to it, it'll probably take you a few hours to beat it. But it's five dollars. It's you know a piece of history, really. It's a it's a positive little experience. So um, in the end, if I had to rate the game, uh, it would be it's you know obviously tough to rate a game like this. Um, I don't necessarily have a lot of stuff to put it against. I don't. I haven't played a lot of platformers for, on the NES, um, so uh, I don't necessarily have all this stuff to stack it up against. Um, but if I had to give it a rating, uh, just on my novice opinion, I guess I would give it like, uh, give it like a, uh, give it like a seven. This is a good game, but th I don't care. You know, if you're Mario, whatever. Um, what console it's on three lives or repeat the entire game is too much also I don't I don't like the sliding a little bit I, that, that gets on my nerves especially with the precision at the end and, you know this could have all been avoided if the death thing wasn't so harsh so I'll give it a seven seven out of ten thank you for watching